Hey, my name's Luke, and this is my whiskey cabinet, and this is how I made it. Check it out. All right, so first step was to go down to Bunnings with my wife and pick you out like some wood. Um, we got these fence panelings. Um, they were six, seven bucks each, I think. Um, and they had a really cool sort of figure on them, so we decided to go with them. Um, this is her whiskey cabinet as well. I figure she should have some say on how it looks. Um, once we got it home, I just had to divide it up into pieces that I thought looked pretty good together and then glue them up. So when you're gluing up boards in clamps, sort of similar to this, they, they can have a bit of a tendency to, to bow in and out away from the clamp. Um, so I use these bits of wood here just to, to keep them aligned with each other, keep them straight, and make it look nice and pretty. This bit of oak, um, I got this from my brother, thanks Mitch, um, and I decided to use that for the shelves and for the base. Step one was to figure out sort of how long it was. Um, I needed two lengths um, <clears throat> for the shelves and a, another two for the base to glue together to make it thick enough. Um, once I had kind of the rough length, I, I squared off the end using this jig that I made. Um, this was just two bits of wood screwed onto another board at a 90 degree angle. Um, and you line that up with, with, with your pencil mark and the saw just cuts straight along. It, it, it works out really good. Um, I did have a bit of trouble here because my blade wasn't very sharp. That's um, a slow, ugly, tear-out sort of cut and what one of the downsides of not using a sharp blade. I swapped it over and then this next cut just sailed through. If you're going to do things, make sure your tools are sharp and in good condition. It'll make life so much easier. For putting the shelves on, I wanted to use dowels. Um, I didn't really want to have screws visible out the side, so I whipped up this this little dowel template. Um, it's not super accurate, but I mean the dowels are hidden anyway. Who cares? As long as they line up, that's that, that's what mattered. Um, they were a little bit oversized these holes, so the dowels did have a bit of a bit of room to kind of help align themselves, which helps. Um, but once once the glue had dried, those shelves are rock solid, uh, so so I've got no trouble there. You see on the little template I've got written um, shelf and side, that's so I can just line the holes up correctly. Uh, it, it helped this board was the same size, or sorry, the same thickness as my shelves, uh, so I could just line that up, put the holes in. And it worked out fine. I didn't want to go too deep, so I put that little flag just made with masking tape on my drill as a, as a bit of a depth gauge. Um, it also blows away some of the wood chips as you as you're drilling as well. I used the offcut when I was measuring out the shelves just as a spacer. That worked out really well. Um, it was consistent. It was already the right thickness, so why not? So you can get a bit more of a sense here of, of just how sort of oversized the holes were. There's only like an extra mil or two in it, um, but that little bit of play was enough that I could get all the holes lined up with the dowels, no worries, but not too much that everything was loose and rattling around. Once the glue had dried in the holes, everything was, was pretty secure and I didn't have any troubles. I did lose my <laughs> sawing template, my sawing jig. Um, that's why it's got a coat of bright pink paint on it. I decided that if I'm going to lose it, I want to be able to see it in amongst all the, the um. trash in my shed. Um, so a coat of pink paint solved that problem. So the base here, you can see that it was it was not quite thick enough or sorry deep enough for what I wanted so I just glued two pieces together um, to get them the right length. This when they all came together it was probably a little bit too deep so I just picked the best kind of three quarters and, and trimmed off the trimmed off the rest. Again with a sharper blade 
made my life so much better and it made that cut so much cleaner. Um, then it was just a case of sanding down the base and the shelves until they were really nice to touch. I think I went down to 180 grit just for this stage um, and that was, that, that, that was really nice. Um. For the base, I did want to put a bit of a kind of decorative edge on it um, rather than leave it square. I don't have a router, but I've got this little palm plane, so I just put a 45 degree chamfer on the end of it. Um, it made it look a whole lot more professional, um, in my opinion, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really happy with how it came out. So rather than try and measure where the base lined up, I figured I'd just use the shelves as a template themselves. Um, this dowel guide that I made here, it, it's the same bit of wood, the holes are in the other end, but I needed these holes to be pretty much dead on vertical. So I didn't hand drill them, I, I did sneak around to dad's place, used his drill press, um, and those holes were really good. Just sort of rough cut the dowels to length for a bit of testing. So this was the reason that I wanted these holes to be to be vertical. I needed them to go straight in the wood without blowing out the side. Um, and, and I had full confidence in this. Uh, and, and it worked, worked really well. The drill bit went right in uh, with no problems at all. No tear out. It worked perfect. So I gave everything a bit of a test run before gluing it all together. Just use another piece of pliers as a stand-in for the back panel um, for now. Um, but with that looking how it did, I was confident it would all go together. So I got the glue bottle out again, then all my clamps, and glued it together. Um... This top panel, um, I, I know it's not really good to be gluing into end grain like that, but it's not there for structural support. It's only there kind of just to, just to hide the, the gap between the door and the, um, the top of the cabinet. Um, if it was going to be something that was load bearing or like needed to keep the whole cabinet square, I'd probably put a few more supports in, maybe another dowel somehow. Um, but I didn't need it, so I didn't worry about it. See all those holes lined up perfectly and that just dropped straight into place with no troubles at all. And then with um, that, all the big pieces were glued together. The door was a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, trying to get the 45 degrees all cut and, and matched up was something I hadn't really done much before. Um, and it's, it's not in the best condition as it was. Um, I'll, I'll get around to fixing it one day, but, but for the, this build, I um, had this 45 degree clamp that I inherited from my grandfather. Um, it, it worked. It held everything in place just long enough to get that back panel on and, and get the door secure. This was the handle and the hinges that I wanted to use. Uh, they were just what I was looking for. They were the right kind of color to match the aesthetic of the cabinet. They were a slim profile on the hinges, so they could just be screwed straight into the side. Um, and the handle was, was the right kind of shape just for a little bit of charm without taking away from the main piece. I did have to drill a section out from the back though, um, where I wanted the handle came through right on the edge of the plywood. So once I drilled a little section away there, we didn't have any troubles. That screw went in, held secure, and the handle works fine. So the top panel was this other thinner piece of oak I had from a previous project. Um, just sort of cut that down to width and then down to length and then that was all good to go. I did want to put a bit of a trim around the edge of it so I bought this oak stripping um, which is coming up soon. Okay. There it is um, with an angle cut on it. Just cut them 
into length and glued them around the edges. Uh, again, this isn't really structural. Um, it's probably not the best um. joint in the world, but I'm not hanging anything off it. I'm not going to be you know, putting putting major weight on any of these pieces, so I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll be fine. For the back panel, I got this sheet of MDF. Um, I couldn't really find anything that was long enough and thin enough, so I went with something a little bit shorter, but a little bit wider. Um, doing that allowed me to kind of cut the main section down the bottom uh, and then still have enough left to use the offcuts to, to, to fill up the rest of it. Um. So once I did have that little offcut that was all ready to go, uh, I just cut out another massive piece and use that kind of as a, as a support to glue it all on. Um, this worked out surprisingly well. Um, <laughs> I didn't think this would be very effective. I thought it might be pretty ugly, but everything holds um, no trouble at all. For a little bit of glass on the inside, I took that sheet of MDF that I'd cut to size. I uh, got this contact cement, spread that out, and then after giving it a little bit of time to, to get tacky, um, I had this upholstery fabric that I bought for from Spotlight. I think this was $7 for the piece that I wanted, um, and just glued that down. To try and even out the pressure while it was drying, I just got another bit of plywood that I had uh, that I was planning on using for the door if the other one worked, and just weighed it down with a bit of wood. After that, it was just time to give it a coat of the satin polyurethane that I've had. Um, I ended up giving this, I think, five coats from memory, with a little uh, light sanding in between, uh, just using a bit of 220 sandpaper. I was really happy with how it was looking, so at this stage, I stopped, I slowed down, I took my time, I did a coat a day for a week, uh, and then it was okay. You don't want to get this close to the end and stuff up the finish. Uh, I've, I've done a few projects like that in the past. I don't want to do it again. And I'm really happy with how this came out. It's it's great to the touch. Um, after that, I just have it on the back panel. And all I had to do left was take it inside and fill it up with, with whiskey. Um... Cool. So there we go. That's it. Um, I'm really happy with how this came out. I'm, I'm honestly happier with this project than I've been with a few of the others in the past. I love the, the oak shelves with the red material, the fence palings that I used on the side. They came out heaps better than I was expecting. Um, the only thing I'm not really happy with is probably the door. Uh, it's probably slightly out of square and honestly that that bit of plywood, um, it's kind of bare on the inside. I think I'm going to use that for a, a recommendations list and the things I need to buy. I'll add that to the shopping list there. Speaking of which, if there's something there that you think I'm missing, uh, I'm due for a top up, let me know and I'll, I'll add it to the collection. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, it's come out really good that, that I've got sort of the top shelf for every day, sort of, if I, if I want a drink, it's, it's there to pick from. If I want to splash out a little bit with something nice with you, Good friends around. I've got that middle shelf, uh, and then right down the bottom, I've got all the cocktail gear and a few spare glasses. So that should be all good to go. If you like this, hit that like button. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. Tell us what you think. Be honest. I won't be offended. And um, if I've earned it, hopefully you'll subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. See ya.